next talk is about AI innovation for special needs and how AI can serve the SDG in that respect. For this talk, I would like to invite on stage Ms. Heidi Kershaw, who is the CEO of Multiple in the USA. Heidi, the floor is yours. Okay. We're getting the clicker. Here we are. I'm going to start this talk by giving you the same hello. Is this one? Okay. That I got in my French classes for 20 years, which is bonjour tout le monde. Uh, salam alaikum um, and hello. My name is Heidi Kershaw and I am the CEO of Multiple, which is a nonprofit that catalyzes innovation for the autism community. I'm standing up here not only as a mother, um, but also as a nonprofit executive, as an entrepreneur, um, and the CEO. So this is my son. This is Jack. He's 11 years old. And he has profound autism. Um, he is my favorite child. He is my only child. Um, and um, the root of my fullness, my full joy. Um, what's interesting about autism is that there is word recognition for it, yet a lot of people don't understand the symptoms or how they manifest. Um, and, and just to draw a picture of that for you, um, we were at a park recently and my son snatched a Frisbee off of the lap of a woman and then he ran away. She ran after him, snatched it back, started yelling at him and became even more aggravated when Jack wouldn't and frankly couldn't respond. And these misunderstandings happen all the time. They happen on a daily basis. Um, and so as a result of that, I created a t-shirt that says autism life amplified with this design on the back to give people a social cue that there was actually something more than what they were seeing that was going on. Um, across the world in Baghdad, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Shema. Shema has two children. She has Aya and Mohammed. Both of them have autism and they're also blind. She had them going to school, but the teachers didn't know how to support them. And the other students were cruel and in some cases very dangerous to Aya. So Shema brought them back into her home and educated them herself and created an entire visibility campaign to inform her circle of influence in Iraq more about autism. One of the ways that she educated her friends was by creating badges that they would wear to the park that said, I'm special needs, please be nice to me. I had no idea that a mother from Los Angeles and a mother in Baghdad would have so much in common. Autism innovation is an area of enormous growth that addresses several of the United Nations sustainable development goals, including reducing inequalities, good health and well-being, and industry, innovation, and infrastructure. We know that there are serious challenges in providing a happy and a safe existence for those in the special needs community. As I've said, this life is hard, but innovation can make it less so. It was out of necessity that Shema and I tried on our own to mitigate negative, harmful reactions to our children. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. So our innovations were small and they were simple, but the need is enormous and the need is universal. My guess is that everyone in this room knows someone who is autistic, someone who is neurodivergent, someone who is developmentally delayed. In the US, the stat is one in 36 babies are born uh, with autism in the United States. And around the world, it's 75 million people estimated by the CDC. This number trends low because there are many countries that do not diagnose for autism. So for this community, for, for my community, for our collective global community, technology and innovation can make all the difference. 
serving as a great global equalizer, lowering the barriers that keep us isolated on this journey and ensuring a brighter future for children like mine and like Shema's. This market is emerging and it is my job that we invite entrepreneurs from all over the world to find us so that we can cultivate their businesses for commercialization. The innovation that we're seeing here can be categorized in 15 different buckets and there, there are cross sections between them and AI is seen throughout. In the accelerator application period that just closed within my company, we received roughly 100 applications and 40% of them implemented AI technologies. So you can imagine how difficult it was to slim down the options that I present to you today. But let's get started and dig into the amazing stuff that's happening at the forefront. So Dr. Michael Cameron at Early Steps Pediatrics is on the front lines of communicating out a diagnosis to families. And he said that the news drops and is received in two of the same ways every single time. First of all, the parent's face shows fear. Their eyes dart around, they don't know what to do, they can't focus on anything. And secondly, they ask the question, what do we do now? So Early Steps Pediatrics was designed with AI to answer that question. Let's see what they do. This is Dr. Michael Cameron from Early Steps Pediatrics. Currently, one in every 36 children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, which means that those individuals and their families require appropriate services. At Early Steps Pediatrics, one of the things we're doing is using humanistic AI for the purpose of revolutionizing pediatric healthcare. We're doing this in three major ways. First, because many individuals in the spectrum have a co-occurring condition, such as a feeding disorder or sleep disorder or neurological disorder, we have created what's referred to as a navigational chatbot for healthcare. What that means is that as a result of a family inputting information into the chatbot, they will be able to access appropriate specialists in their geography, such as a neurologist, for example, or a GI doc, and to coordinate care for, uh, for their child. This is critically important for individuals that, uh, that are on the spectrum. The second thing that we're doing is supporting professionals that are providing support to what uh, individuals. So we've created a knowledge management system by using a proprietary chat GPT-4 system. What that means is that these professionals can access an entire constellation of knowledge and information that's required in order to appropriately serve a child. So for example, a speech and language pathologist would be able to get protocols from the system in order to implement appropriate interventions for for a child and to support a family. The third thing that we're doing is personalizing the healthcare. So this is used for families. So for that family that's on the receiving end of instructions from a speech and language pathologist, for example, we are taking their writing samples. And then as a result of taking their writing sample, we are we are mapping out the instructions to them in their own words. And this is critically important um, to make sure that families are very comfortable with the direction that they're given by a professional that is guiding them. We can also take their writing and render it into their primary language, Spanish on the left, for example, or Mandarin Chinese on, uh, on the right. At Early Steps Pediatrics, we are not only reshaping and refining healthcare, we are revolutionizing the entire system for individuals in the spectrum. Thank you. Okay, next up. Ling Xiao is the founder of Spectrum AI, which is a platform designed to make data collection easier for autism therapists. To paint a picture for you, the amount of time of therapeutic, uh, the amount of therapeutic time lost in any given day is enormous. In my own home, 15 minutes of every single hour is dedicated to manual data entry. We had a therapist who decided what they wanted to do was bring an abacus because an abacus would be easier than the manual data collection they were having to do. So what Ling Xiao did was decided that we should let therapists do their jobs and let technology do what it does best. So let's take a look at what they do at Spectrum AI. Hi, my name is Selena Bernal, a board certified behavior analyst on the Spectrum AI clinical team. We have developed an electronic health record purpose-built for applied behavior analysis that makes in-session clinical documentation extremely easy. Now behavior technicians can focus on providing great therapy, 
while also creating a multimedia medical record that lets supervisors provide remote supervision, support, training, and treatment planning to ensure the best outcomes possible. Just like today's top EMRs in physical medicine, our multimedia medical record is shared directly with payers through our network analytics portal. This will create dramatic efficiencies in not only utilization, but also network management and support of value-based contracting. Okay, the third company I wanna highlight for you today is called Fofu and they are out of Brazil. What they wanna do is make therapy more engaging for their young clients. And so the CEO has a background from gamification and AI, and he is developing proprietary algorithms that make the product really engaging. At the same time, he hired a product director, Tricia Arehu, who brings a very personal and compelling story into the product line. She herself is neurodiverse, and so she knows what needs to be seen. So let's take a look at what Fofu is doing to treat their young clients. <laughs> At Fofu, we're harnessing the power of artificial intelligence to transform the lives of children with autism. Our platform digitizes therapy, creating engaging game-like experiences personalized for each child. We take what can be a challenging process and turn it into a fun, rewarding experience. Our AI assistant collects and processes performance data in real time, adapting the activities according to the child's progress and needs optimizing treatment in the clinic and at home. Therapists are always in full control of how the AI assistant works, equipped with powerful tools to create personalized therapy plans, monitor progress, and share detailed reports. Studies show that OutPlatform speeds up the therapeutic journey by up to 31%, making the process more efficient and affordable, empowering therapists and caretakers to change children's lives. Okay, who's cut? <laughs> I really enjoy that video. It never gets old for me. Okay, the fourth and the last technology that I want to introduce to you is called Zoundream, and it's a Swiss company, um, and we just accepted them into our accelerator. It's based on the sound of an infant's cry because there's so much information that you can get from the cry coming from a baby. You can get what they need, you can understand their emotions, and you can even um, understand if there's any potential pathologies or developmental disorders. Let's go ahead and, and play this video, if we're able to. Our innovation solves a problem that a lot of people experience. Young parents are often overwhelmed by the arrival of their newborn. Baby crying is the first language newborns use to communicate, and misunderstanding the message can generate frustration on both sides. Even though cries sound different depending on the language of the parents, the meaning of those cries are universal and identical around the world. Babies cry the same way to express five basic needs, being hungry, sleepy, fussy, have stomach pain, or overstimulation. Soundream developed the baby translator based on AI. This solution translates baby's cries into a particular baby need. Like all AI, it feeds on data to become more accurate, in this case, data being baby cries. We improved the accuracy of the baby translator by collecting more data. So what is the new future for the baby translator? The recognition of baby needs is only the beginning in the field of health prevention. Now, we're exploring new horizons expanding to Spain, Germany, Italy, and Hong Kong. In the next years, Sandra will be able to use baby cries as a biomarker to support the early detection of pathologies or neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism, hearing disorders, hyperactivity, and others. So for families, this technology gives them a sense of control at their very most vulnerable moments. And it also gives them a hint into perhaps they need to find therapy right away. For hospitals, this is a non-invasive technique to support clinicians in early detections of pathologies and disorders. And for consumer electronics, it becomes an added differentiating factor for their most profitable segments. As I mentioned, these are just four examples of tools that are being used and going into commercialization using AI to make the lives of those with autism better. 
Beyond those, we can expect to see wearables, glasses, more apps, and tangible items coming to the market for the purpose of fostering skills and creating a world that is kinder. Those in the special needs community share the experience of being marginalized, of being misunderstood, and dependent upon ourselves to provide resources for our own family members. You see the t-shirt that I'm wearing today, and you see the badge that my friend Shema made. Neither of these can be scaled in the way that technology can be. Innovation democratizes our access to help family members, and innovation educates those with disabilities to understand. And in order to meet the United Nations SDGs, we need to intentionally invest in these scalable innovations that are coming to life. So thank you. Merci. Shokran for listening today, and I'm happy to discuss further if anyone has questions. Mm -hmm.